All right, this is test number two with the super squish. Let's see the squish. Short squish. Yeah, no. Lots of squish. Lots of squish. All right, here we go. <laughs> So what we did is we, we came up with a, an extremely passive solution that only uses things like a linear actuator or a pneumatic piston that would be able to um, grab it, rotate it if, if need be, and then put it onto the, uh, the, the spring and let it sit there as it scores and then the human player can take it up. We, we would recommend uh, going with a, a passive system simply because you put less resources on your robot. Drive My Robot is the AM41U. I said it backwards, right? <laughs> Drive My Robot, we have the kit bot, which is the AM14U, but we switched out the gearbox with the new Evo gearbox from Andy Mark. What's really cool about this gearbox is that it does have a bronze dog gear. It's gonna be very fluid when it shifts. It's also spring-loaded and it's um, powered with pneumatics from PHD, which is awesome. What I like about this is that it does support three motors on each side, but in this configuration, we're gonna be using two. Hey guys, what am I? First this shooter was extremely consistent when we were shooting boulders. However, now the pattern of the fuel balls, it uh, was much more inconsistent. I think teams are gonna be really successful this year with wheeled shooters. However, we're having a bit of trouble with this specific design. You might wanna try some different type of wheels. Uh, try your spacing a little bit. We were able to try a few different types of spacing, but the balls just kept flying all sorts of different directions. So we decided this shooter has the accuracy of out of a stormtrooper. So luckily, Andrew Rudolph came up with an idea to take some experience from FTC and make a flicker shooter. So after we built the roller shooter, we uh, decided we needed to prototype something a little different. And when we did the robot in one weekend this year, we built a flipper shooter for that wiffle ball shooter. And it was pretty consistent. We liked it, but we didn't have a lot of confidence in that, uh, in our abilities to package that in that robot. But in the scale of the ball to the robot, for FRC, we think, hey, it might work. <laughs> so it's a pretty simple mechanism. Basically, we've got an Andy Mark PG motor with the gearbox here and a just a little flange that we made uh, to bolt it up. And there's a piece of Lex in here and basically it acts like a spring. And as it rotates by, it hits a bar that, that loads it up and it flicks the ball away. And what we really like about this is it doesn't, right now it doesn't quite have the power but it's incredibly consistent. Um, we had a box set up on the floor that is about the size of the hole that we're gonna be shooting and actually a little smaller. And it was making 100% of the shots in there. But we haven't quite gotten the height that we need out of it. So we know there needs to be tuning on it. Also, again, the same problem we had with FTC is it's not the easiest thing to load balls into. You kind of have to figure that out. So there's a, a little bit of engineering work left to do on this, but it's incredibly consistent, which we know is key to scoring all your shots that you need to make. So teams might consider prototyping one of these early on. Mechanically, you could see it's very simple. Um, it's not taking a whole lot of power. We've got a motor that's pretty underused in this application. And most teams have the tools to make a, a shooter like this. Um, it might not ever have enough power. It might be really dangerous when it gets to having that power. Um, wheeled shooters are definitely a known capacity, a little simpler to engineer in the fact that you know the wheel speed and you know that the wheel, the speed that the ball is going to be coming out. Um, so, in a theoretical sense, it might be a little simpler than trying to calculate the modulus of a bending piece of lexane. But you could engineer this with some springs that you know the spring constants, you know the forces the springs put out. Electrically, also the load is way, way less on this. You don't have you know two mini sims running at full throttle pulling 20 amps each. You've got one motor pulling 10 amps every once in a while. But there's timings to get the balls in and all that stuff. So. A lot of things to weigh, but I think teams might really want to seriously consider something like this, even though you may have never built one before. All right, at the end of the game, there's a thing where you gotta climb the rope thing. And to do that, we decided to use a roller mechanism. And for our rope, we decided to use a ratchet strap that's one inch wide. Um, and to get the ratchet strap to wind around the spool, we, uh, we put Velcro on the ratchet strap and uh, so uh, loop Velcro on the ratchet strap and hook Velcro on the spool. And so that way when we just drive up to the, to the dangling strap, it just grabs it and starts wrapping. 
and it only needs Velcro on the first uh, couple inches of it. So the spool is a couple of Modulox Flex Hub flanges on a half inch hex shaft, and that's driven by a, a number 25 chain sprocket. Uh, I think it's a 48 tooth sprocket driven by a 12 tooth chain and something like a 200 to 1 VEX planetary reduction and a little tiny motor. Bag motor. A bag motor. So the mechanism will kind of mount on top of the robot and uh, be laying forward and when it uh, hits the rope it'll start to wind it up and stand up straight in the middle of the robot and pick it up from there. You may or may not use a ratcheting wrench of some sort to keep it from back driving. After our initial test, we lifted 95 pounds on a, uh, a big barbell, and it really consistently lifted pretty effortlessly without pulling very much uh, amperage. So we're pretty happy with it and think it's a pretty solid uh, mechanism. You know, we kind of just built it as a module so that we can put it on the robot any place uh, when we're done and we configure all the mechanisms. This mechanism is a fairly simple mechanism, and we think it's going to be really solid. So we'd recommend any team that is looking for a way to do it and unsure that this would be a good, a good method. Assuming Velcro is allowed, I think Velcro is probably the easiest solution to grabbing the rope. It seemed to work really, really well. All right, well, we've got a lot of stuff done for our first day. I mean, I think we did more today than we have in a long time, but we still have a long way to go. Uh, our goals for tomorrow are to continue developing our prototypes. We've got We've got more shooters to prototype. We've got to work on the gears, which were, you know, our two of our biggest uh, hurdles. Got to hit the road and start up for to go to some sleep and start tomorrow. Let's go! Woo! Woo! Oh God! <laughs> the seat. The seat's not bolted down. <laughs>